Hey guys, how's it going? Solo back with another weekend update video. And let's do three things today. Let's talk about all the stocks that have earnings coming up this week. I'm gonna talk about another stock that doesn't have earnings, but has very high implied volatility right now. And then lastly, I'm gonna end the video with my thoughts on my plays on what I plan to do for this coming week. So let's get right into it. So here's the weekly earnings whispers stock calendar here. And you can see a lot of tickers have earnings this week, but there's a few that are on my radar, or at least I am keeping an eye on. And those are going to be mostly the bigger companies like Netflix, which is Tuesday after close Tesla, which is Wednesday after close, you know, Tesla's IV is going to be super high Chipotle. Obviously everybody knows about Chipotle, but the stock price is just out of this world right now. So really, at least for me, if I even thought about playing Chipotle earnings, it would have to be with spreads because there's no way I could afford a cash secured put on Chipotle, Coca-Cola, Intel, AT&T is a big one. I know AT&T is very popular online and in my viewership because AT&T is a stable company. It's a relatively cheap stock and they pay dividends. So I know it's very popular. Some of the airlines also have earnings coming up. I'm not saying I'm playing the airlines, but just of note. IBM also Logitech Monday after close so a lot of big companies but let's just take a couple look at a few of these mainly Netflix and Tesla I am personally not gonna be playing options or earnings on either of these stocks just because they're a little bit out of my price range and I don't have a lot of free capital left so let's start off looking at Netflix so over the past month you can see it's been up and to the right we have had this little bit of a plateau or sell-off some of this might have been due to that kind of cancel Netflix trending tweets that were on Twitter for a show that people did not really like recently. But let's just take a look at how juicy these options are. If I wanted to sell cash grid put for this Friday, I would collect $2,698, $2,700 in premium for, wow, the share price is still sky high, $53,250 in capital. That would be a return on my capital or return on risk of 5.1%, which is again, very juicy. And that's actually pretty juicy for a stock of this caliber. So, you know, if you did want to play spreads on it, I think Netflix could give you some juicy premiums. But like I said, I'm not interested. I don't have this much capital to spend on spreads to make it worthwhile. I mean, let's just do some examples here. Let's say I want to do a $5 wide spread between 500 and 505. I would be able to collect the difference in the premiums, which is only $30. So that would be $30 divided by what would be $500 at risk. So that would be a return on risk of 6%, which is not bad from a numbers perspective, but I just don't like the appeal of trying to make $30 while risking a complete loss of $500, but that's just me. I tend to not like spreads. I'm a big fan of the wheel personally, but that's just my opinion. Let's take a look at the other ticker we were looking at and that was gonna be Tesla. I'm gonna bet that these at the money puts are probably like 8% return on risk. That's gonna be my prediction here, let's just see. So Tesla, kind of choppy, right? They had their battery day recently, which didn't go as well as people thought it would. A lot of chop for the past three months. Look at the past monthly graph, again, a lot of chop. So I don't know, Tesla's a little bit up in the air for me like it always is, but during earnings times, you know, it's even more choppy and just unpredictable. Let's just see for fun what the at the money put would get me. So that's $2,220 in premium divided by 43,750 in risk. So that will be a return on risk of, wow, so 5.1%. I'm actually shocked because right now, Tesla is trading for less than Netflix right now, which is interesting, but the return on risk is the same. So I guess if you had to choose between the two, just from a number standpoint, I would choose Tesla because the amount of capital that would require, I should say collateral, is less than I would need for the other ticker. But anyway, I don't plan on playing any of these. Let's get right into the third stock that I was looking at that doesn't have earnings coming up, but its IV rank is currently at 100, meaning it is the highest IV that we've seen for the past few months now, I take a look at the past three months of charting data for IV rank because earlier in the year, all IVs across the market were sky high because of the crash from the illness. So let's just see, because right now, if you missed my other videos, Tesla is gonna do their first of two remaining FAA tests 
It's penciled in for this Thursday, October 22nd. We'll have to see if that actually happens on Thursday because weather permitting and other events may postpone it for a day or two or three days, who knows. But that's, like I said, one of two remaining tests that Space or Virgin Galactic needs to pass before they get full clearance from the FAA for regular space flights. So it's a big deal. And as a result, it's going to be like an earnings event pretty much in terms of the IV. Let's take a look at what the cash grip puts on space are trading for at the money. So it's $82 in premium for the seller put for only, and I say only in quotes, $2,200 in collateral. So that is a return on risk of 3.7%, which is not bad. I thought it would be a little bit higher to be honest with you, but these numbers may change when the market opens tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see, but that's not bad for only you know $2,200 in collateral. You're getting a potential of 3.8% sorry, 3.7% return on your risk. So that is something that's definitely on my radar. I don't have a lot of free capital right now to trade, but if I did, I would certainly be looking at wheeling this again, some cash grid puts, because I think people are bullish on it. Let's take a look at the trading view chart on space. As you can see, these yellow lines represent areas of support and resistance. Right now, actually the last two trading days we were green, when we closed above this area of what was once resistance at about $22 or just shy of it. And I'm looking to see on Monday if we can close above $22 again to confirm that this is now going to be an area of support because it was once resistance. You can see we topped out for the past week of trading at that level. So we'll have to wait and see. But if we get confirmation that this is not going to be support, if I wanted to wheel this again, I would be looking at selling cash your puts below ideally $20 because that's below this area of trend and also this area of Fibonacci level. But I think I'd be relatively safe. Plus, it looks like this orange line, the 21 day moving average is right around or just shy of $20. And that would also act as an area of support. So I think I'd be pretty safe if I could sell cash gear puts on space below $20. But let's talk about the plays that I am thinking about making and most likely will play right at market open tomorrow if futures and pre-market look well. And that of course is gonna be on AMD. So let's take a look and see what AMD is doing right now. We've had a little bit of chop for the past few trading days, but you can see we're pretty much flat the last trading day on Friday. I currently own 200 shares of AMD at $85 a share. That's where I was assigned on some cash grid puts a week ago. And I also recently opened a cash grid put on AMD because we had a little bit of a dip. If we go back to the chart here, I can show you intraday, we had a little bit of a dip and I thought that we were gonna rally for the rest of the day. So I wanted to kind of catch the dip and maybe try and scalp a little few, uh, little little taco money on some premiums. But I did not end up buying it out because as you can see, we ended up selling off even more and then pretty much slowly rallying all day long. I'm still in the green right now. So I did sell one cash good put at the $75 strike price for this coming Friday. And I sold that for $26. You can see it's trading for about $23 right now. So I am profitable by $3 right now. So that could buy me a taco. But I'm most likely going to just hold this to expiration to collect max profit. And I think that will happen. But what I'm going to be looking to do this coming week, hopefully Monday morning, is selling more covered calls on AMD because I want to collect a lot of premium. But I kind of also want to collect some stock appreciation and get my shares called away just because I'm a little bit tenuous in the market right now. There's a lot of choppiness in the market overall. I think people can't decide whether we're in a bull market still, in a bear market still. Are we short-term bearish, short-term bullish? Who knows? There's still talks of the stimulus bill with discussions and skinny bills, and no one really knows what's going on here. So that's what scares me a little bit. So I just kind of would rather be more cash than usual, just so I don't end up bag holding if we do have a little bit of a mini crash or a full-on crash coming up soon, especially with the election coming up and another debate that's coming up this week. So I was looking at the premiums and let's say I want to sell a call for $90 for this coming Friday. You can see I would collect $28 in premium, right? And that'll be $28 in premium for what I have is $8,500 in collateral because that's what I paid for those 100 shares. So that would be a return on my capital of 0.33%. Not, not bad, right? Not great, not bad. But just keep in mind that if AMD does go above 90, I also collect that stock appreciation. So I bought those shares for 85. I would have to sell them for 90 because that's the strike price. So I would collect $500 
in stock appreciation per contract. And I have two contracts. So that would be $1,000 plus $56 because two times 28. So yes, the premiums are low, but the stock appreciation is gonna be very high. But let's say if I went out another week to October 30th, because I didn't notice the premiums for October 30th were even more juicier per week. So again, if I go to the $90 strike, you can see it's $191, right? Just one week before, it was only 28. 191, just out of curiosity, divided by 28, it is over almost seven times higher premiums just by going an extra week. So by doubling my days to expiration, right, from one week to two weeks, I can collect seven times more premium. So I'm not gonna sell weekly covered calls. I'm gonna be looking at selling at least two week out covered calls because I can collect way more premium at $191 for the same strike. And I would get that same stock appreciation if AMD hits $90 in two weeks now. Now, if we keep doing that, so $191 just for an average would be about $96 in premium per week. I know theta decay is not linear. I know the premium does not kind of decay linearly, but just as an example for the math, that would be equivalent to $96 on average per week in premium. Let's see if I go one more week at November 6th. If I look at the 90 strike premium, that's $269, right? Of course, it's gonna be higher, but let's see what the average works out to. So 269 divided by three is now, so this is only $90 in premium. So in order to maximize my premium per week, it seems that the October 30th expiration gives me the most kind of efficient use of my collateral really, or official efficient use of my stock. So I am really looking at the October 30th expiration. And the other nice thing about October 30th is that that week, AMD on the 27th, which is a Wednesday, has their earnings. And then the following day, the 28th, has their new Big Navi GPU reveal. So that Friday, October 30th, I'm sure there's gonna be a whole lot of IV crush happening. So I think that I will be able to collect a lot of premium on that Friday, even if I decide to close it early on Wednesday or Thursday maybe, just because there's gonna be a lot of IV crush happening. So that's what I'm looking at right now. My only question is now, I'm pretty set on the October 30th expiration date. My only question now is which strike do I choose? Because if I go to let's say 89, you can see I collect almost $30 more in premium per contract, but obviously I would collect less in stock appreciation if that hits. Like I said, a part of me does want those shares to get called away. Let's take a look at the trading view graph here. You can see that right now, the past two trading days, actually past three trading days, we were red. We've been hovering along this area of support or resistance, I can't decide right now, at about $83, $84. And for the past two days, we basically have been using this pink line, which is the 50-day moving average, as support. And that's at around $82. So in order for me to sell a 90 strike would be all the way up here. And I think that's unlikely for AMD right now to get all the way to 89 in two trading weeks because it would have to figure out if this is support or resistance first, blow through this area of what's resistance at about 84, 85, and this area of resistance at about 88. And it's very close to all time highs because all time highs on AMD are back at 94. So this actually might even be another area of resistance right now because we intraday topped out there on October 8th and then pretty much also topped out there on September 3rd. So maybe there's another area of resistance around 89. So I think in order for me to collect more premium and also have a higher chance of my shares getting called away, I am looking at something like the 89 or 88 strike. Again, it's going to be pretty hard. AMD would have to move pretty hard to get up that high, but I think it's possible but along the way, even if it doesn't, I get to keep more premium because if we go to the option chain, if I were to sell, let's say 88 strike, you can see that's $248 in premium per contract versus 191. That's basically 50 to $60 more per contract. And I want to sell two of them. That's an extra hundred bucks in premium that I would collect. I would be giving up a little bit of stock appreciation if AMD gives it that gets above that 88 strike. And that's the gamble is really how high do I think AMD is gonna go and how much premium do I really wanna collect? And how badly do I want my shares called away or not called away? So that's gonna be my decision this coming trading week. I am looking in the mid to high 80s for the strike. I think 90 is gonna to be too high. I might even look at something if I really wanna get aggressive at like 85. That would be my cost basis. 
meaning that's where I was assigned my shares, but the premiums are gonna be extra juicy, right? Look at this, $353 per contract. So I could, you know, if AMD rallies above 85, which is certainly possible because it's only $83 right now, so it's only $2 away, I could pretty much guarantee myself about $700 in premium, right? Because $350 times two is 700. So I could just say, you know what? Let me just get my $700 in premium and just walk away. Let my shares get called away, be cash, and then sleep better at night. So those are the decisions I have to make. Stay tuned for my update video tomorrow after the market closed to decide what I do. Let me know what stocks you're looking at playing this week. Are you thinking about playing earnings? As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and happy trading.